I'll tell you what, folks. I'm starting to realize something. And it might get me in trouble, but you know what? It's about time that somebody said this. Everyone wants to think about it, but I'll be the one to say it because I am so brave. And you think about it when you see the left calling Amy Coney Barrett a radical because she's a Catholic, but then seeing them praise Joe Biden for supposedly being so devout in his Catholic faith. You see it when every state in the country has billboards alongside the highways from the federal government asking for information about the people who occupied the Capitol, but nobody cared enough to even do remotely the same for the Antifa and Black Lives Matter terrorists. You see it when Dr. Fauci talks about the importance of wearing masks, but then he himself won't wear one off camera. Or when these politicians talk about the importance of social distancing and locking down, but then they themselves aren't following those protocols. And it's about time that someone says it. I don't even care if I get banned for saying it because the left are a bunch of hypocrites. That was my impression of a mainstream conservative with an IQ of 104 making tens of thousands of dollars each month to describe to you people via his microphone all of the low-hanging fruit he's picked and placed into his basket of takes. I will now revert back to myself, transition to greatness so that we can have a much needed lesson in framing and rhetorical strategy for intelligent and patriotic conservatives who actually seek to conserve something, so do stay tuned. <laughs> John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. What a fantastic discussion we have planned for today. Such powerful and important insight awaits us all. I'm excited. But first, I don't know if you've noticed, not me if you've heard this one, but many state and local governments have used the virus to trample on the constitutional rights of millions while simultaneously defunding law enforcement while the mob and dangerous criminals roam free. When the government can't or won't ensure your safety, self-defense is your only option. That's why iTarget was invented, to give law-abiding citizens a cost-effective way to train in the safety and privacy of their own home. No more inconvenient trips to the range, no more expensive practice ammunition, just download iTarget's proprietary app, load the laser bullet into your firearm, and start training. Just like so. Comes in all the major calibers, including 223 for your AR, so you can stay sharp with almost any firearm. And today you can save 10%, plus get free shipping with the offer code DOYLE at checkout when you go to itargetpro.com. This is the smartest way for you to practice, and it pays for itself within like a day. That's the letter I, targetpro.com, itargetpro.com, offer code DOYLE, very epic. We're going to talk about hypocrisy today, and I'm not going to claim that I've never called out hypocrisy before within a political context. Of course I have, we all have, and you have to do it from time to time to hold people accountable. Or in my case, you do it to cast the widest net to appeal to the widest audience from time to time. But we need to address this fixation on hypocrisy that exists exclusively on the right. You don't see this on the left, and there's a reason for that. You know, will you see the occasional Occupy Democrats tear meme suddenly exposing conservative hypocrisy? Sure. Do people talk about it on social media? Sure. But I'm talking about the macro trends here, something that is much more prevalent within the right than the left in discussions in media and everything, is this fixation on hypocrisy. And not only is it counterproductive for us, it's actually entirely symptomatic of just how bad the position that we're in is in society, in your own country. And you might be thinking, well, you know, how are we supposed to hold people accountable without calling out hypocrisy? Where are your principles? Relax, I will explain. And if you're familiar with this channel at all, you know that one of the things that we like to do, we like to gatekeep. We do a little gatekeeping. It's called, we do a little gatekeeping. You might know that I've been described as the CEO of gatekeeping conservatism, which is something, which is something that I'm quite proud of. Uh, we have very good reasons for that. And a lot of people like to view politics as like a hobby or something. It's just something that they dabble in on the side. I'm not going to say that's a bad thing. That's probably a lot better for your mental health. But these types of people tend to dislike gatekeeping because they view it as akin to, you know, kids in the cafeteria being like, well, no, you can't sit with us. You can't join our club or whatever. I understand that. But it really does serve a purpose. And in case we need a reminder, I'll provide you a brief synopsis. In the last 60 years, conservatives have lost ground on virtually everything. We have lost so much that we're now literally on the back foot in defense of there only being two genders. We're not winning. In the better part of the last century, the roulette wheel of conservative politics has had a house edge of 100%. Because of that, and that's not up for debate, by the way, that we're losing that badly, that's just a fact. But because of that, we don't have time for anything less than total focus and optimal strategy. We don't have time to keep experimenting with things that don't work. I don't care how fun they are. I don't care how virtuous it makes you feel. But what I do care about is winning. Like I care about taking our country back because I'd actually like to raise a family here at some point. And given our fixation on the same failing policies and tactics throughout the last several decades, I'd like us to just take a break from pointing and laughing at the hypocrisy of the left to be collectively humbled by the knowledge that if we operate under the widely accepted definition of hypocrisy, which is saying one thing but doing the other, then conservatives are the biggest hypocrites in the history of the United States of America. Because we say that we're conserving America, but we've actually conserved nothing. 
We have nothing to show for ourselves. We are the ultimate hypocrites. It's an inconvenient truth, but it is nonetheless still truth. And the sooner we process this, the sooner we can begin to head in a positive direction. One of the first steps to this is to break free from what's referred to as the Sir Galahad theory of politics. This idea that, well, I will win because my heart is pure. I will win because I'm good and because I'm correct. It's just not true. It'd be nice if it were true, but it's not. It's not enough to be correct. It's not enough to be good people. You actually have to put forth effort because the reality is that victory in character does not translate into actualized victory, especially if they don't even value that character in the first place. The left doesn't believe in objective morality. They don't value that. It's all subjective to them, which makes that strategy even more unlikely to succeed. The left believes in subjective morality. And when there is no right and wrong because everything is subjective, virtue comes to be redefined as simply tolerance. That's it, how tolerant you are towards someone's subjective belief system. Tolerance is right, intolerance is wrong. And this is why it's a call out hypocrisy, which by the way, I don't know if you've noticed this, but anywhere you look in the realm of conservative dialogue, that's all you see. Well, AOC said this, but did this. Nancy Pelosi said this, but did this. Oh, they want to ban your guns? Well, they've got armed security. It's all you see because it sells. It makes us feel like we're winning, but in reality, what it does is expose the power structures that we're at the bottom of, and it showcases just how pathetic and lazy we are. It's the laziest flaw to call out, hypocrisy, because it doesn't require you to actually stand for something. It just requires that you're there to hold someone else to their subjectively defined standards. Doesn't matter. None of that matters. The left is bad because they want to kill babies. They want to take your guns away. Not my Beretta. We're going to have a problem. I didn't even plan that. I'm a genius. They want to destroy the history and heritage of our nation. That's why they're bad. Hypocrisy assumes that there's an agreed upon value framework of which they're in violation. What values would those be? And what values are we in alignment? Because it seems to me like conservatives volunteer themselves to these ideas of principles and assuming good faith in what is effectively a prisoner's dilemma. But the left doesn't want to participate in that with you. It's not even that they claim to and then, you know, they just lie about it. No, they're like openly trying to crush you into the ground. And so if you refuse to respond to that out of some misguided sense of self-righteousness, worry not because everyone knows that you're just rationalizing your cowardice to be a virtue. You're weak. You would literally be facing the wall in the MAGA hat, about to be shot in the back of a skull by Black Lives Matter and Antifa paramilitants wielding high points and AK-47s respectively. And you make a comment to the guy next to you like, can you imagine what would happen if we did this to them? So much for the tolerant left. And then you go JFK mode. Let's talk about tolerance for a second. We touched on this recently, but it's important to reiterate that the left never actually cared about tolerance ever, but they didn't have any power in society. So a hundred years ago, you know, what did they do? They employed these ideas of tolerance and live and let live, man, as a rhetorical strategy to gain a seat at the table. And now they've taken over and you're like, well, I find it actually rather intolerant of you to not allow me to have my seat back. And that's the biggest thing to understand. Hypocrisy is the impotent cry of the powerless. To cry hypocrisy is to reinforce and display the power structures in this country and reveal just how impotent you actually are. You point out the hypocrisy and nothing happens. You don't have the power to hold them to their own standards, even if you disagree with the standards in the first place. Think about that. The left rarely uses hypocrisy because they don't need to. Usually they just mobilize their societal control to demonize people. That's a lot different. That is categorically and significantly different. The left sets the narrative as this person is evil as arbitrated by our misrepresentation. These ideas are evil as arbitrated by our misrepresentation. React accordingly. And the right says this person didn't do what they said they were going to do. And then the country is like, shut up, you're evil. You see the problem? We don't set the narratives. We don't have the power. To cry hypocrisy implies that narratives are being set that you don't control because you are reacting to them and conservatives don't set narratives or really do anything. We simply react. Well, can you believe this? Next thing you know, they're gonna do this other crazy thing that I'm not gonna do anything about. They get off on hypocrisy because they know that it makes you look weak. Every time you complain about leftist hypocrisy, the frequency that you emit, the data that you emit when transcribed into purely zeros and ones can just as easily be interpreted as please have sex with my wife. And I can't stress enough how important it is for conservatives to realize this. The fact that the left did something despite saying something else can at least be respected in that they did something. Does this mean that we should lie or sacrifice integrity? Absolutely not. It simply means that we need to stop being cowards, basically. Like what about this could possibly get worse for you? They're already censoring you. They censored your president and they realize that as long as they do it through private companies instead of government, both of which operating within the same coalition that is fundamentally and wholly against you, then it'll be fine because you'll be too entrenched in your think tank principles to do anything about it. I'll give you an example. Some people who self-identify as conservatives will say, well, you know, we shouldn't teach our kids to love America because that's indoctrination and that's what the left does. And it's like, buddy, do you not love America? Do you not acknowledge that American history is spectacular and worthy of appreciation? Well, of course I do. I just don't like the idea of being told what to think. And it's like, yeah, I get that. But there comes a time when you really just have to abandon this whole question everything, er, I'm a free thinker, er, like that whole mentality and just grow up. Americano for Joseph, what'd you really put in that cup? 
Uh, how do I know caffeine isn't just a placebo? Uh, what do you think it costs more to distribute? A drug that makes you energized? Or propaganda commercials that show people energized after supposedly taking the drug? Uh, I'm a free thinker, because it's like, should you question everything? Yeah, but you reach a point where it's time to stop asking questions and just acknowledge reality. This is why conspiracy theories are so popular nowadays. People are supplementing for their lack of intelligence and personality by just deciding that which is most interesting to them must be the truest reflection of reality. And they're always the least interesting theories. And the worst part is that the conditioning is still there, invariably. And the whole question everything mentality is purely to supplement for the fact that they're just like not that interesting and they don't have agency. You'll get coffee with a girl and she'll be like, I think the moon landing was fake. And you'll be like, oh yeah, really? I have a flash drive in my backpack with files on it that can, well, I won't say that, uh, I won't say that, but you know, you'll say something like, okay, yeah, or what if every copy of Super Mario 64 was personalized? And they'll be like, no way, that's crazy. You're crazy. Or actually, no, perfect example. Go ask the person you know who loves conspiracy theories. They just love them. Go ask them what they think about the lockdowns and COVID. Watch how quickly they go from, OMG, <laughs> Epstein like didn't kill himself, to what's wrong with you? The science is settled, experts! And they just melt down because these people just do whatever the narrative tells them. They're like the mom who's always trying to like keep up with her kids and you know, the trends who always just is trying to be cool, except what's cool to them is being a slave to the system. And the system allows for little things like, ooh, what if the government is talking to aliens? Ooh, what if the Illuminati is referenced on the $1 bill? Try going against the grain, see what happens to you. Try going against the social trends and against the narrative. Try asking your friend with the question everything sticker on their laptop if they question the media's reported cause of death for George Floyd. Got off track here. These are two separate types of people we're talking about here. Right now, we're talking about the average person who doesn't really have agency, they just respond to social trends and narratives, and who quite often uses this idea of question everything to cope for that fact, which is probably subconsciously realized, or at least to supplement for a lack of real personality or insight. But first, we were talking about the person who just doesn't like the idea of, say, teaching kids that they should love their country because, well, the left are the ones who indoctrinate. Here's the thing. First of all, if you don't push back against the indoctrination that they're already doing and will continue to do until you push back, your kids and grandkids won't even have a country to live in. That's number one. Number two is simply that if American history were just taught objectively, that would be sufficient. We're not talking about constructing these elaborate narratives like, oh, George Washington called an attack nuke to win the Revolutionary War, which is why we've cemented it as a staple of American culture. We're just acknowledging the fact that if American history were actually taught to our children, maybe they wouldn't love the country, but they certainly wouldn't hate it. And at the very least, they would respect it. Whereas now what happens is at the very least, they take it for granted. And in most cases, they hate it or think it's evil. Thus illustrates the power of narratives. And I know I've painted a relatively bleak picture, but there's actually two points of good news here. Firstly, that if we ever get to set the narratives, we won't even have to lie to do so. That's kind of cool. Secondly, and this one might sound weird, bear with me. A majority of the people who voted for Joe Biden would have voted for Trump if the right controlled the narratives. Seriously, think about that. These are people who don't really think for themselves, who just kind of go with the flow, react to the trends in society so that they're perfectly aligned with them. And if the right were in charge of setting those trends, and if we did so more effectively, those types of people would come over to our side, guaranteed, because you can't expect everyone to do the levels of research that we do, to follow the stuff as closely as we do, and frankly, to even care about the stuff as much as we do. And like, yeah, it's important, but honestly, it's not the most pleasant lifestyle. And so people need, people actually deserve even to live in a society that doesn't try to brainwash them into hating that society, but rather one that simply presents the information. Very basic stuff. America's actually good. America should actually be put first. Families are good and should be aspired to. Vices are bad. Our culture is exceptional. Our history is exceptional. Our benevolence is exceptional, etc. We're not talking about lying about the issues, lying about our rank in the world as it pertains to different metrics. No, we're just trying to stop the country from committing suicide by telling the truth. But we can't tell the truth if we don't have the power to do so. There's a reason why they don't want you to have that power, why they're shutting you down. They can't afford to give you back that seat at the table because ultimately truth and good will win, but only if they are given the chance to do so. And so as long as we subscribe to this idea of, well, who gets to decide what's right and wrong? Who gets to decide what's true or not? We're going to lose forever. And honestly, to me, that sounds a lot less like a guy who's trying to get to the bottom of things and more like a guy who doesn't really believe in himself or anything at all, which I guess I can understand given the state of things, but we don't have time for that anymore. Figure it out. The Rock says, know your damn role. It's basically as simple as working to make yourself the best and most virtuous person that you can be, working your way up whichever ladder you prefer, and then waiting to use that power that you've obtained for good. And if you don't like that, just be honest with yourself at least, because it's probably not that you don't like the idea of figuring out what good is. It's probably because you just don't like the idea of climbing the ladder because that actually requires work on your part. Whereas noticing the difference between AOC's rhetoric and behavior and pointing a finger and laughing as though you've saved the West doesn't really require anything.
Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and of course, share the video with a friend. Pizza time mode, yet again. Epic pin that someone sent me in the mail because I got kicked off Twitter for telling people to call their representatives. Very epic. We love it. And then of course, the 92FS. Can I show this on YouTube? I can because it's for a sponsor. We love our sponsors. Imagine being a small business right now, going through all of that and still willing to take the risk of sponsoring conservatives. We like literally like, we love our sponsors for that reason in itself. Um, and then also they make everything possible, just like you guys. Everyone makes everything possible. I make this like the least amount of possible. Like I do it, which is cool, but you get, everyone else is like, like Atlas. Actually, no, that's Pagan. Uh, I don't want to compare it to, I don't want to blaspheme. I'll just shut up. That's actually what I'll do. I'll just shut up. But we love the 92FS. And uh, we love the laser bullet too. It's kind of epic. I don't know if I have batteries in it. Shut up, Bolshevik. Wait a minute. Why didn't that work? Oh, I'm stupid. Safety's on. Well, having the safety on isn't stupid. Safety is, of course, first. But, you know, it's obviously clear. Well, it's actually, it's not clear because we got the laser bullet in it. Shut up, Bolshevik. Yeah. This is how we take back the culture. Few understand this. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. 